we are in section 4.4 on page 4. And the directions here are at the top of the page. We're going to look at B, though. It says, find the limit. Use L'Hopital's rule when appropriate. If there is a more elementary method, consider using it. If L'Hopital's rule does not apply, explain why. And again, we will deal with A together. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at B. And we're going to go ahead and notice that it is x is approaching 0 on the right. So if we do that and evaluate this with direct sub, we end up with 1 over 0, which is infinity, minus 1 over 0, which is infinity. And no, this does not equal 0. This is one of our indeterminate forms. And so we have indeterminate. So I'm going to take a second and rewrite our function here. But we have a problem because I'm not able to use L'Hopital's because L'Hopital's only works when you have a one fraction and written and indeterminate form of 0 over 0 or a plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. So rewriting this. So I need to rewrite this as one fraction. And right now I have two fractions. So in order to do that, you need to make sure that they have a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the first one by x over x and the second one by sine x over sine x. And when I do that, this is going to become the limit as x approaches 0 on the right of, and we are going to have x times 1, which is x, minus 1 times sine x, which is sine x, all over x times sine x. And so I'm going to go ahead and use direct sub again, and if I do that and I evaluate this at 0 approaching on the right, get 0 minus sine of 0 is 0, so that's going to be 0 over 0 times 0, which is 0. So now I can use L'Hopital's. And this is indeterminate. I should put that down also. So this is indeterminate, just like the ones that we saw previously. So I'm going to now use L'Hopital's rule. So put an LH. The limit stays the same. And taking the derivative of the numerator by itself, we have 1 minus the derivative of sine is cosine of x all over. And then taking the derivative of the denominator, though, notice that you are multiplying two things together. So we have the first one times the derivative of the second one plus the second one times the derivative of the first. And going ahead and evaluating this at 0 from the right, we have 1 minus cosine of 0 from the right is 1 over 0 times 1 is 0 plus 0, so we get 0 over 0, which is still indeterminate. So we're going to try to use L'Hopital's again. So using L'Hopital's, same limit, limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And we're going to take the derivative again as the numerator. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of negative cosine is going to become positive sine of x. All over. And then our derivative of our denominator, we have to take the derivative of the first term. There's two parts together that have x's. And so we have the first times the derivative of the second, which is negative sine x. Move the negative out in front. Plus the second times the derivative of the first plus the derivative of our second term, which is the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. And then evaluating this as x is approaching 0. So sine of 0 is 0. Again, 0 from the right. Then we have negative 0 times 0, which is 0, plus cosine um, of 0 from the right is 1 and another one. So for this we get 0 over 2, which is not indeterminate. This just simplifies to 0. So 
So at the bottom of the page, it says to deal with indeterminates of the form, so more indeterminate forms, try taking the logarithm of the function first, then take the limit, then the exponent. So we have an example on here of that right next on the next page. And for that one, we're actually going to look at that together in our mini lectures.